Oh. Welcome back, Bass University live on the water with JT Kenny. That's right, in the wind. In the wind. It's not nearly as windy as it was a few minutes ago, though. <laughs> Man, it was ferocious, dude. Yes, it was. It was something. It was like 40 mile an hour gusts, like maybe maybe more, maybe close to 50. I don't know. We were uh, our cameraman Jeff. Was we bailed. <laughs> we bailed. Is what we did. He's getting blown off the back deck. We had to, we hunkered under the 95 bridge here to get some protection. And, uh, but anyway, ah! welcome back. Guys that were with us earlier, welcome back. <laughs> Let's do it, boys! <laughs> we're, uh, we're having a party out here, man. It's, it's Bash University Live. We got a challenge going on we're right in the middle of it. Uh, JK is going to update us on how much time we have left on our challenge. Two hour challenge, me and JT, we're trying to get five. In the boat, we got three so far. We got two more to get, but we're over halfway done. And uh, we've dialed in a little bit, right, JT? I mean, we, yeah, we tried so many different things. A little bit. It seems like just a weighted, I caught one on a weighted stick worm, and uh, you know, Pete's caught the other two on the on the magnet head with a, with a little bit of stick worm on the back of it. Um, so yeah. that's, what's, that's what's been working. We're coming up on the first mat that we've come up on all day long. I'm going to dump one in it and see what happens. You say we got 55 minutes, JK? Is that what you said? 45 minutes. 45 minutes left. I can see JT's coming I, up on a mat. We've had, we haven't really seen much mats along here. The grass has been sprayed quite a bit. Uh, and we don't have very much matted vegetation, so when you see an isolated piece like that, well, we're hoping for some fireworks. Now the sun is beaming. I'm getting my glasses out. It's like a different whole different day than it was just a few minutes ago. Pete, apparently I wasn't holding my mouth right because this is the only mat we've seen in the whole canal. I thought for sure that we would get a bite on it. Apparently I was wrong, as I have been before. I was wrong once. Yeah. I don't believe that, Pete. <laughs> I, don't, I can't believe that you were wrong one time <laughs> if, if they reference you as the dean. <laughs> They do, I do get held to a higher standard. No, I understand that. that they're not referencing that as a sardine, are they? <laughs> some, I, I, I mean, way. I just want to be sure about all this. Some. I don't. I don't want you know there to be a a, a, a difference in information. <laughs> Ooh, in any man. way. Boy, that would hit some of those stalks going down. Felt like something was popping it on the way. Pretty impressed that your your jig head comes through this stuff, man. Yeah, just that little weed guard. I mean, obviously, if you throw it into some really nasty stuff, it like I'm it, in it, right it now. might get a little funny on you, but but it's not Ooh. meant to be a heavy Ooh. cover, you know, real heavy color, de heavy cover deal. Just as I'm talking about it, direct me to the jig heads, JT. They are right in here. There's several different sizes: three sixteenths, five sixteenths, seven sixteenths. Five sixteenths is what you had last. I can't quite make it out. Is it in this box that says jig heads? No, nope, it would be in this one right here. Oh, it's in a different box. That box. Because I haven't taken them all out yet. Uh, and put them in the box that says jig heads. I got See, you. See, I try to keep everybody guessing that's in my boat. JT's mag jig head. You got me, this is a seven sixteenths? Uh, you were using a five sixteenths last time. I got one right here. This is it, by the way, guys. This is JT's signature series, Nichols, Nichols Lures, Mag Jig Head. You got those aces in here? They are under your knee. Okay.
Now, I'm using fluorocarbon, guys, and I'm interested in what JT's uh, perspective is on it, but I'm going to tie in a, an improved clinch knot with my fluorocarbon. That's the knot I use. I, I, I used to use a polymer. I had to fire that knot because I don't tie a very good one and it kept breaking. I use an improved clinch. What knot do you use on fluorocarbon? JT? I use a version of a San Diego jam knot. Um, it's one of those ones where I end up with three tag ends. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of had the same problem with fluorocarbon and uh, the Palomar kind of cutting itself. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen all the time, but it seems to happen at very inappropriate times. Yeah, it usually only happens with a fish over four pounds, which is a real asset. Typically, a in a tournament situation, <laughs> a fish over four pounds is an extreme asset, <laughs> and uh, that's when you don't want those kind of events taking place. Who does? Chris would like to hear about why we're punching isolated mats. Can you describe how you approach an isolated mat? When it's an isolated mat, the approach is really, uh, to me, is a big deal because I want to try to approach it as, as quietly and as stealthily as possible. Um, obviously, when the wind's blowing this hard, uh, stealth probably isn't as much of a factor as it would be uh, when we're in a, you know, in a calm or a much less uh, slower wind situation, but um, definitely just try to be sneaky. Definitely try to be sneaky. That's the that's the best thing I can say. Try to try to get to where you can maybe if there is just a little bit of wind instead of what we're dealing with today, you can use that wind to slide in to, in there. You know, maybe set your boat up where you don't have to use your trolling motor too much and just let the let the boat ease up into it. Kind of like how I'm sliding up to this one right now. Only the wind's blowing. When when you I'd approach say 30 anyway. <laughs> do you, are you uh, do you fish outside in? Do you go right to the thickest part first? A I lot mean, of times on these isolated mats, I'll go right to the thickest part first. Um, typically, that's where he's going to be. I would really like to be able to pick these apart a little better, but the, this this wind is just not letting me. We're just doing the best we can do, Pete. You know what I mean? Yeah, we are. It's interesting every, and I've noticed this everywhere. When the when the wind increases, or when the clouds come over, the wind has a tendency to really gust. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, and then when the sun comes out, it chills out a little bit. And right now we're in one of those gusts. I like the part when it chills out a little bit. Yeah. That's the one I like. Here's a little sun. Let's see what happens. You know, I'm really disappointed and in, in, <laughs> as windy as it is, we couldn't get a, a bite on a moving bait, Pete. You know that? You know, I am too. You know, you would think that uh, a reaction bait would be I mean, your I've bait tried of choice in this condition. Woo! Hold on, Jeff. Pretty good. That's pretty good, Gus. <laughs> good night. There's a really big gust coming. Look at it, it's just white. Yeah, it is just all white water behind us. This is some powerful stuff. This is. Hey guys, if you're just tuning in, we're Bass University Live with JT Kenny. We're uh, down here on a canal system connected to the sti Stick Marsh in Palm County, Florida. Uh, Brevard County, Florida. Say it again? Brevard County, Florida. Brevard County, Florida. I keep screwing that up, but we're glad you're with us. We're here, <laughs> cold front. Um, we're having a challenge trying to catch a limit. We're sitting at three. And um, 
Some may dispute one of those fish, but I don't want to hear it. We are at three. We've got about 30, 40 minutes left. If uh, you know you guys are Bass University TV subscribers, we're celebrating the holidays, guys. Come on over, ask any question you want to me or JT. You can ask us why we're even fishing today in this. <laughs> <You want to. laughs> if we didn't force him out here, I believe JT would be sitting in his living room right now. That, that is correct, sir. <laughs> we appreciate you being with us. But we're, if we pick your question from our IM feed on bashu.tv backslash live, we pick your IM question. We're going to send you a prize, cool hat, lure, whatever we got hanging around the warehouse. Maybe cut off one of JT's lures and send that to you too. But um, if you have never subscribed to Bass University TV, come on over, join the party. Uh, you can do that at bashu.tv. We're giving 50% off uh, for all new subscribers. Use the code MLF50. It's going to give you 50% off your first two months. Plus, we'll give you a hat and some other stuff. So come on over, join the party, get over to the IM board. We're going to try to catch two more fish if the wind doesn't carry us to Kansas. It might. Whew. When you're drifting this fast, I tell you what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just trying to find a target. I mean, I would prefer to be more diligent, thorough, cast to the best clumps I can find, or you know a good spot but you know you're moving so fast you just have to try to capitalize on any opportunity in front of you and that uh, the truth? take that cast and and then move into the next one you're moving real fast you're covering a lot of water that's the real positive side JT yeah it really is I, I'm just trying to do the best I can with the boat I mean I know the back sw swinging and swaying around and 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 I'm just trying to do whatever I can do, you know. You're doing great. What? Tell them what you're doing. You, you mentioned it earlier, but I think it's worth mentioning again because a lot of guys don't don't wouldn't know what to do in this situation. But you got us in reverse most of the time. Yeah, a lot of times I'm actually have the have the trolling motor g g going backwards. I mean, we're still going with the wind because the wind is so heavy. But I'm still trying to guide the boat. But instead of guiding the boat with the trolling motor carrying us forward, mm -hmm. I'm using the trolling motor to kind of slow us down, basically. Um, and that's what's making the back of the boat swing around so much. Well, you're doing a masterful job keeping us both in casting range here, keeping Se Jeff in the semi. boat. <laughs> semi casting, semi -casting. casting range. Something else you could do, guys, and, and we use them up north a lot, is Power Pole has a great paddle system that you can put on your power poles they and, do. and slow your drift down by like 30 percent or 40 percent it's, it's a massive I've difference used them a lot up north when we're doing the smallmouth tournaments and stuff mm, yep um and i think they're absolutely excellent um and, and, and believe it or not where tyler asked a question uh, about drift socks and uh we're talking about power pole paddles that that slow us down and I, I, you know, drift socks, you don't have power poles, drift socks are excellent tools. Oh yeah, we used drift socks for years before we had power poles. Absolutely. And in this case, it would be really a, a great tool for us because we're only, I mean, honestly, I, I might be hitting one out of every 15 targets, maybe. Yep. Um, it's just the nature of the wind. Uh, by slowing down, we, we would be able to, you know, access quite a few more targets, so. The bad thing about it is, I just don't understand. I would much rather be jerking or something, and I'm gonna try it again, but we just can't seem to get bit on anything but a, a small stick worm, you know what I mean? In this wind, there's, to me, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to catch some jerking. You know, the sun's out, sun's always good for a jerk bait. Talk to me about your jerk bait. What, what, are you, what are you throwing down here? Well, you know, typically down here in Florida, I like to throw a, a long A bomber um, because typically we're fishing over a lot of grass. But today, once again, with the conditions, we chose to kind of try to sneak into this canal. And this canal, it's, it's got a lot of fish in it, but it really doesn't have all the grass in it. 
So I'm actually using a, a mega bass jerk bait, you know, more of a traditional uh, bait that runs a little bit deeper. You know, we, we use that long A bomber uh, because of how shallow it runs. You know, and you can keep it up on top of the grass, but in this situation, you know, there's not a lot of grass. So I went with a more, you know, more normal, you know, with the guys up north, you know, right, are, are more used to throwing type, type of bait. And we got good enough clarity for them oh, to hit absolutely. it. Oh, absolutely, I can see it. And these Florida strains do bite a jerk bait. It, you don't ever hear about people fishing it much, but <clears throat> I've seen days when, when they won't bite anything else and they'll, they'll bite a jerk bait. <laughs> All right, I'm focused. Stand by. <laughs> what, who was that? Gil. Gil has challenged us. I forgot you guys didn't see, didn't hear that question. Gil has said, if we catch one, he will join Bass University. So we're going to keep those cameras running until midnight if necessary. All right. <laughs> we will catch one. We're, we're, we Gil's won't. In, Gil's in trouble. <laughs> Gil, you're joining our program. <laughs> Boy, the pads are much more isolated through here and yeah. It makes me feel like uh like every one, you ought to get one. Exactly, off of. exactly. We're coming to the end of the canal system up here. JT was just telling us salt water on the other side of the, the canal system, right it up is, in front it of us. It is right there. That Right on the other side of that, that dam, you can see down there in front of us, there's snook and tarpon and redfish, Jack Crevel. And then about another mile down past that dam, you'll be in the Indian River, which is the intercoastal waterway. And then about another mile past that is Sebastian Inlet. Uh, and that is the Atlantic Ocean. So we are fishing really close to, see that foliage go by right there? No, I didn't. It was a yeah. Fly. There was a big chunk of uh, a tree or something just went by. <laughs> kind of feel like I'm in that movie Twister. I know. There's right? a cow. Another cow. <laughs> nah, it's the same cow. <laughs> Maybe we should go down behind that dam and try to catch tarpon instead of bass. How does that, how do they work? Like we know the Florida strain are notoriously stingy in cold fronts as we're experiencing, but how, how do the saltwater fish? You do a lot of that. Do they do the same thing? Yeah, I really do. The, the, the saltwater fish like tarpon and snook, they're very finicky on the cold fronts too. But uh, the spotted sea trout and the redfish, they're pretty hardy. You right. know, mm -hmm. uh, they catch redfish, you know, as far up as, as Massachusetts, really. Um, you know, so they're, they're a pretty hardy fish and, and, and the different species of, of sea trout, they are too. So they're pretty hardy. Um, but they're still, when a cold front comes through, they're still better in the afternoon. Right. Uh, when cold fronts come through in Florida in the morning, that's time for coffee and Waffle House. <laughs> Shout out to my local Waffle House. Um, that's where we spent, Flor Floridians spend a lot of time on cold fronts in the mornings. <laughs> um, we do a lot of cold front fishing, but in the afternoon is much, much more productive than mornings are. So we, we tend to drink coffee in the morning and fish in the afternoon. That's a good move. Well, I'm sure we've got a lot of people spending their lunch hour with us, and we appreciate you guys being with us. And we are trying to catch a bass. <laughs> and trying to stay in the boat and not get blown over. I mean it. 
God. Whoa. I am making an effort to stay in the boat. I had to back up from the edge there. I've said that many a time in my life, Pete. <laughs> you had to back up from the edge? I've had to back up from the edge many times. You like to live in that zone? I do. <laughs> I've heard if that anybody about wants to know what it's like to to be to be JT, you ever you know that feeling when you're when you're sitting on a bar stool and you kind of lean it back on the two two legs? Yeah. And you almost fall and then you catch yourself. <laughs> That's the way I've felt since 1987 about. It's a constant, that feeling. I've come to embrace it. <laughs> yeah, Jeff has that feeling right now. Yeah, th this, like what we're feeling right now, trying to stand up in this wind, this is me all the that, time. That same this feeling. Is, this, is, when it, this is no bother. When it's hot and sunny, this is what, the way you feel. I still feel like this. I feel like <laughs> I'm going to fall down every gust. <laughs> I really don't know why a bass in this wind is not biting my jerker. Oh. Two-footed stance, boys. Two-footed stance in the 40 mile an hour gusts. Two-footed stance. We don't need anybody going in the water today. Tell you one thing you guys will see me doing when I'm pitching is that as soon as that bait hits the water, I throw my line down on the water. I lay it down and that really helps me. It helps that bait fall where it's at because with this wind, if you leave your a bow in your line. Yeah, what Pete was saying, that, that the way that wind will just grab that line and it won't actually let your bait fall down to the bottom. You know, that's a big thing that people got to realize about when they're fishing in the wind. There's a lot of wind drag on your line. Um, and you might think that you're that your bait is sinking down towards the bottom, but the wind is actually putting a bow in your line and holding your bait up from sinking. So you wanna make sure you throw that line down on the surface. Fishy, fishy in the brook. Come bite on old Jake's hook. Fishy, fishy in the canal. Won't you come be my pal? Look, it worked. It worked. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It worked. I asked him to come be my pal. Come it on. worked, boys. Oh. Look at here. Yes. I did it. Welcome to the party, Gil. <laughs> I said fishy, fishy in the canal. Ah! Won't you come be my pal? That's our first fish. I caught a jerker. Something other than a stick ah! bait. Ah Gil, start signing up. Pull that credit card out, cuz. <laughs> Visa, MasterCard, Amex, we take them all. <laughs> Thirteen and a half inch wind bass. That's four, baby. That's four. This is the MLF championship. We got four. We got twenty. Twenty two minutes, minutes to, to go. go, boys. I gotta get to jerking. <laughs> We get one more, we're gonna be, we're gonna win $10 million. We're gonna be featured on the Outdoor Channel, CBS, Discovery, I don't know, who else? Pursuit, Sportsman? Pursuit. Whoever else is in the outdoor media group, <laughs> we're in it. We can do it. We can do it. Man, did he collapse on that bait too. <laughs> Head first. I can see the win in sight. I got the W. <laughs>
JK, is anybody cheering us on right now? We're so close. Nothing from the peanut gallery right now. We need some positive big fish catching vibes, folks. We're almost there. I'm stealing that off of you, Pete. He collapsed on it. <laughs> I'm what? Jonathan Turner? John James Thomas? What? Wants to know what JT's short for? Jive Turkey. Jive Turkey. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't know that. <laughs> Straight from the Flint, Michigan tropics. Ah, if they want the real answer for JT, you could probably find it on Google. But what do you mean the real? The hey, real we got answer. the real JT. He says it's Jive Turkey, man. Oh, one just followed it. Ah! That was him. Dude, I, I honestly thought I saw one follow you earlier out the corner of my eye. It was a 14-incher. <laughs> he, was was he was just getting ready to collapse on it. <laughs> I love that. Hashtag shout out to Pete and his meat. That was awesome. I mean, I love it when they hit it that way, right? That, oh, that yeah. kind of tells me that they like that color. They like the well, way it's your kind of, you know, golden is. shinery type color, you yep. know? Shiner E, is that, if, that, if, that's a, <laughs> if that's a real shout out to An me. An adjective for, of some sort. Shout out to me for making up words on live TV. <laughs> but a lot of times you get them tail hooked. Oh yeah. And, and we'll take those, but it's Yeah, seemed, but when, they, when, they, when he's got it from the head down in his mouth, you know he meant to, he meant to eat that. Apparently none of his brethren would like to do such a thing. Yeah, I believe they will. That jerk bait might save us. What else I like is we're coming kind of to the end of the canal, which uh, with all this wind stacking, potentially stacking bait up here, or who knows? Well, Pete, as you know, I've said my piece and I've counted to three, so. <laughs> That, that last fish is going to have to come. Could be in the top drawer of a roll-up desk for all we know. You can, you can Google those lines and find out the, the answers to what JT's talking about, too. <laughs> I'm sure Pete knows. <laughs> I know. Pete knows when that horse is starting to turn. <laughs> he knows when the census man got nicked. <laughs> I thought that horse was starting to turn. <laughs> That's right. That don't make no sense. Code, MLF50, Gil. That's the code, use that one, buddy. And we're glad to have you, man. Gotcha, Gil, thanks, buddy. Thanks for the vote of confidence, BassUTV, dot awesome. Dot awesome. <laughs> <laughs> dot awesome, backslash, unstoppable. <laughs> oh, yes. Dash oh, now they're gonna come, number five's fixing the collapse. <laughs> That's Dash good looking. <laughs> backslash, unstoppable. <laughs> This is awesome sauce. This is the first time all day we've seen a buzzard, guys. Ah, oh, that's what it was. But he's back. Is he trying to set, tell us that number five is not coming? <laughs> Hashtag can't and won't happen. <laughs> we've been played with buzzards on this trip. Pending doom everywhere. But today we've not seen them and we're catching them. Oh! And again? Duh! Come on! It was a gar, actually. I'm not. I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to tell everybody a story. A gar would not count. It was a non-game fish. Not count in our five fish aggregate Florida state limit. It count in fish my city. That would. It would be a stellar catch. 
Discovery Channel or Nat, Nat Geo Wild. Nat Geo Wild. Bite it. We're serious. It's coming down to it. Whoo. Oh, it's going to feel the just, pressure mounting. It's just going to make it as hard as it possibly can make it on us with just 15 minutes or so left to go. I feel the pressure mounting. You can cut the air with a fake butter knife. 15 minutes. Get off of that lily pad. Pete, get that meat out of them pads. <laughs> I gotta get that meat out of them pads. That's what I'm talking about. Get that meat out of them pads. Guys, I can tell you, you know, I've seen a lot of guys get frustrated. And all I'm trying to do in this wind is I'm trying to let that bait fall down them stalks. Cause that's about all I can do. I try to give it slack, lay the line on the water. I might twitch it once or twice and then I'm finding another target. But that, oftentimes, is enough to get you bit in these extreme conditions. Well, the fish, when, 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 when there's this much wind, they'll be loose on the cover. Like, they'll be willing to, to move off of the cover a little bit. That is a big advantage of the wind, right? Strike zones open up a little yep. bit, and you don't have to be quite as precise. I'm trying to get us back over there next to the bank. <laughs> The wind's trying to carry us right down the middle of this. JT's right. doing a masterful job up front with the trolling motor. The hardest thing for me to do in this wind is Grab to catch brain. this thing so I can flip it. <laughs> Gotta grab my cricket, it's hard. It is. <laughs> we've, we've got enough challenges without having a without Damn. having trouble grabbing a hard cricket. <laughs> That's a different show. <laughs> Brandon wants to know with all the followers he's having, why aren't you jerking too for that last one? Because they're not committing. We we. Brandon wanted to know why, if I'm having all these ones follow it, why, why Pete isn't trying to get his last piece of meat with the with a jerk bait too. And I mean, the, all the fish except one have come on the uh, on the stick worm. So I mean, just because we're seeing a lot, it's almost like a guy addicted to a glide bait, you know? Like right, right. Seeing all these fish, and we're seeing all these fish, but if you're not catching them. You know, the, the, the stick bait has definitely been a, has produced more of the fish, even though we're seeing more on the yanker. On the yanker? This is my, this is my yanker. Because at this point, you're not really twitching it. You know, it, 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 now you're yanking it, you know, trying to get, get some attention. Because you, you think about it, with with all the waves and the, the lights penetration in the waves and there's light going around crazy, probably looks like a disco down there. So I'm, you know, I'm really <laughs> yanking on this thing to get, you know, maybe grab some attention at the club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to make some noise. That's right. The key to using scent in this conditions is to make sure that it has bits of real panther in it. That is true. It'll make it work 60% of the time, <laughs> every time. <laughs> I don't that think way you know that, it's good. That's right. <laughs> I don't think there would be a whole lot of advantage to using scent right now because the, the boat is moving so quickly that I don't think the fish would really have time to 
you know, use their sense of scent and, and, and be able to hone in on something like that, you know, because with me, obviously with the jerk bait, you know, that's not a, you know, real lure that people use a lot of scent with. And, and with Pete, he's just dumping it down on those, on those pad stalks and, and you know, he doesn't have much time to leave it lay there because the boat's moving so fast that it's already gone. So, it, you know, at that stage, I don't think that there's a whole lot of use and, and sense. But, but I've been wrong before. Well, that being said, you know, in these conditions, I, I t tend to agree with you. Um, if we had conditions where we could be a little bit Suck more persistent, uh, I think scent, especially in a cold front situation, can be helpful. Yes, absolutely. Great question though. 10 minutes to go. JT, I would always catch a limit if I didn't run out of time. I, I feel the same. We got 10 minutes left today. Can we do it? Can we do it? I don't know if we can, but I'm trying real hard. We got a shaded bank here. Everything's been shaded all morning. <laughs> I heard a tip from Rick Clun one time. He said the guy that's tough to beat is the guy that fishes in as intently in the last hour as he does in the first hour of his fishing game. Wise words from a wise man. No doubt. You tournament guys, I know it's you have a tendency to get down and uh, you know if conditions aren't favoring you. And, but man, maintaining your intensity and your confidence, you, you never know. Got, you know what else guys have a tendency to do, JT, is if they're really doing well, they have a tendency to relax Oh yeah. at the end of a day. That is, I have caught myself doing that one. You got yourself 15 or 18 pounds, you're feeling pretty good and you have a tendency to relax, but it's amazing if you keep your intensity up, you can push that weight up to 20 or even more. You know, early in my career, I would kind of, uh, you know, relax a little bit like that. But, at, you know, at the later stages of my career, um, I, I, I kind of started thinking a little bit differently on that deal and kind of started going into that. The bigger bag I had, I kept having that, I'm that close to an even bigger bag mentality, you right. know? And, uh, and I would actually a lot of times find myself pushing harder the bigger of a bag I got because I was like, man, I got, you know, I got 18. I got the opportunity to have 21 or 22 here with a couple of good bites, you know, and then you get 21 or 22 and you're like, huh, I got an opportunity to have 25 here if I get rid of that four pounder, you know. So it's a, different people think different ways. How do you think the MLF guys are... Because, you know, it's about catching as many fish a lot in a lot of the shows that I've watched. <laughs> the, the target for big fish hasn't been there. With this big group of anglers now, bigger group, uh, how do you think they're going to respond as far as targeting big fish? Do you think it's going to change a little bit than what we've seen? Um, you know, I really do think it's going to change a little bit. Um, but, I mean, big fish still count. Right. Guys are going to still catch big fish. It's just they might not be just trying to catch five big ones. You're going to see these guys trying to catch as many fish as they can in the course of a day. Are you going to see less giant glide baits being thrown? Probably, you know, but, uh, you know, you're still going to see guys pitching and flipping and, you know, spinner baiting and stuff like that. It's not going to be a shaky head tour like everybody talks about, you know, or not everybody, but, you know, there's some naysayers out there that, say, oh, I don't want to watch a shaky head tour and all that. And, th and that's not what it's going to be. There's still going to be guys cranking and, you know, doing all kinds of stuff like that. So I do think at times you might see guys pull out the, the smaller finesse baits quicker 
mm -hmm. at times, but you're just not gonna, it's just not gonna be this shaky head tour like you hear some of these naysayers talk about. I think guys are gonna get good at it, you know, and continue to get good at accessing those bigger fish and, and figuring this out from a different angle. No, I absolutely agree. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, guys that target big fish, you know, are still gonna do good. You know, there's no doubt about that. I mean, cause a, a six pounder is still a six pounder. You're still getting six pounds, right? You know, and if you can get a six pounder and a bunch of twos and threes, you're gonna do good. You know, you're going to do better than the guy that catches a whole bunch of pound and a halfers. Unless he catches a whole bunch of pound and a halfers. <laughs> which at that point is pretty cool too when you catch that many fish. So I don't really see the uh, problem in it. Matter of fact, I think it's going to be quite entertaining. Well, come on now. Catch one. Five minutes. In the final five minutes, Pete, do you do, you, do I do I just stick with the jerk bait? Is that what I should do? Should I think I, go back I think you should. I'm going right back to sticking sticking with the jerker. I mean, I got this part of it covered. I think. I think you do. I I feel as though you do. Shout out to throwing one out in the cover in the middle. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen one foot waves in this canal before, but, <laughs> but I'm looking at them right in this area. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. This wind is hammering. And tomorrow it'll be less than five miles an hour winds. No, no, no tomorrow's 10 to 15. And then the next day is uh, light and variable. Light and variable. Yeah, Sunday is light and variable. So guys head down here right now. You got the drive time. Drive now, drive through tomorrow. Be down here on uh, Christmas Eve. Nice, stable, warm conditions. Sunday, you will find me in a 31 foot yellowfin with 700 mercury horsepower, about 17 miles off of Palm Bay, dropping the hammer on some offshore fish. Awesome. Because, <laughs> uh, why have 600 horsepower on your offshore boat when you can have seven? <laughs> Makes total sense to me. Why have 800 pounds of men in your boat when you can you have, have a thousand? thousand? That's exactly right. <laughs> Shout out to Ranger Boats for being able to handle all of us. <laughs> Oh, count us down, JK. Three minutes. Three minutes. The, the pressure's building. Uh, I'm not even sure what we win <laughs> for the challenge. Um, we're so close. We need one 12 inch bass uh, under a, a variety of unfavorable conditions that we're facing. And 12 inches is stretching it. That is definitely <laughs> one bass of any kind. One bass of any size. We're, we're going to call it a keeper. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Dig one out. Opportunity for greatness is at hand. We can do it. You can do it, Duffy Moon. Two minutes. Two minute warning. Two minute warning, no fish landing violations. That, well, we, we would, if we, even if we get a fish landing violation, we still, we still make the challenge. I feel like the jerk bait has let me down. It, it showed me a little glory and then it took it away just as fast. Man, a lot of them flashed at it, looked at it. Multiple species looking at it. Multiple species angler, that's correct.
Take it now! <laughs> Is he there? No. I was just hoping. <laughs> Come on now. Fishy, fishy in the canal. Come be my pal. This is the way it happens. Bite it. Dirty. Oh gosh! <laughs> I can't stand it! 30! 24 <laughs> seconds! Kelly Clarkson! <laughs> Woo! Kelly Clarkson! 17 seconds! Oh! Be there! Be there! That's where it should be, right there! <laughs> Is it? Oh, one more, one on, more cast. Right there, right one there. more cast. Seven, six, five, four, four, three. Come on. Two, one. No! 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 <laughs> Dang it! Son of a. <laughs> Arr! That was exhilarating. <laughs> this is a dumb sport. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's a dumb weather day. <laughs> I, uh, hey, man, we had a lot of fun. Appreciate all you guys being with us. Um, this I thing's like 100 yards wide. Look at it. Look, <laughs> look out across. Look at the big waves. There's two almost, man. That's insane. We're stupid. <laughs> We're hey, stupid, but it was still fun. We gave them hell. <laughs> we did what we could. You know, we talked about Florida fishing. We did, uh, and we obviously demonstrated that cold fronts do mess with these Florida fish. It's amazing how good it can be and how bad it can be. I was happy that we got to talk to the guys about if they wanted to plan a trip down here in the winter time, how to do that, how to actually watch the cold fronts and start getting ready. When a cold front is going through Florida, start getting ready and start planning to make your way down there and, and hitting those right good weather windows. Man, that, that's such a cool tip. And you know, for you guys that have the ability to do that, watch that. I, we've seen it, like uh, when Dean Rojas set the record. Oh yeah. The when, days when it, leading up to that were, were freezing. And then it went when, 80 degrees uh, yep. three days in a row. Yep. And and boom. That's, that's, how, the, that's how it happened. The, the heaviest like stringer ever caught was caught that way. So yep. uh, great. You want to be, you want to fish like we said, you want to fish those, those times when it's warming up after a cold front. We need the cold fronts to actually set up that good fishing. But you don't want to be here like this during the cold front. <laughs> you want to be here after, after before the next one hits. After. You want to be pulling into your house that you rented today. Right. You, you, exactly. Exactly. And you want to make sure you bring as many quotes and lines from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Or Anger or Anchorman or That's right. Or Tin Cup. That's yeah, Tin Cup's a good Man, one. It's mandatory conversation in a boat down here in Florida. But uh, hey, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for subscribing. Who was our big time? You got us a new subscriber. Gil. Gil's with us of the time every time. <laughs> we uh, we and uh, that has subscribed. So all the winners are sending that, that stuff. Um, the code's gonna. We're going to keep that from midnight to the So, he is the code. On the word. Well, F50.